Hi. C'est moi. <laughs> Let me see who wants to pop in. Oof. Lots of energy today. Lordy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's good, though. I dig it. <laughs> I am trying to invite all those that I know like to hop on the lives. Okay. Let's start there. Okay. Hi, Rhonda. God, you're so good about hopping on when you see me. <laughs> Rhonda, do you know how to see who's watching? Mm, I could know how to share it. Oh, okay, there it is. I see it. All right. Sometimes I can't identify the little faces that pop up, and then I can't say hello unless they comment. So. Hi. What's shaking, bacon? <laughs> Oh yeah, hydrating. I wrote so much for today. Half of it was something I channeled a few days ago. I went back and I'm just bringing a little Christmas tree up in here. <laughs> little Douglas fir. More abundance. Anyway, half of it's this channeled information and I read back and I was like, oh, that's all really good. <laughs> and we're gonna open up our throats a bit today. So make sure you have liquid. Uh, I think I'm going to play with a turquoise today, the blue throat chakra energy, right? Hmm, things like rosemary, pine, also opens the lungs. You know? That's why we like it in the house. I love bringing the outside in, don't you? Yeah, it's so great. I got my mountain shirt on, I realized, Idlewild. This might be... Uh, California. This might be a place I want to live one day or at least have a cabin. It's a really cute little hippie community. It's pretty small and artsy fartsy. My daughter likes it up there. She goes to things up there. You know, just manifesting, right? Changing. I also trimmed my hair. <laughs> That's something I haven't done in forever. Usually when you do things like that, to me, it's big change. Hi, Lisa. I'm taking my time so people can hop on. Yeah. Burning pine trees. Good. Yeah, let's do a little cinnamon as well. Since that's our abundance. And we are going to chant today a little bit and open up the throat chakras. And we're going to talk about that. <sighs> have some liquid. I have three lives today. I had to write three different things for. So, Whew. and then I'm having trouble grounding because there's so much energy. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a great day. I feel it in my bones. Mm. That's an old saying, right? That's an old folk saying. I feel it in my bones, right? Like there's so many things that people do that they don't realize it's an intuitive thing or even magic, right? Like there's folk customs deep in like West Virginia and the hills in North Carolina. I think a lot of those peoples came from Ireland, actually. Anyway, there's like, you know, they'll put like pins, like literally safety pins on them for protection. You know, and you know how people do a money dance and they pin money and stuff. It's like, that's all old folk customs of warding off the evil eye and stuff like that. Yeah. We probably should do a nice little ritual to get to ward off the evil eye. <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're just going to create this beautiful container of energy right now. I like to call it my little dragon's egg. And you're each in your own little dragon's egg, right? And we're going to go on these journeys. And we're super protected. We're not taking on each other's stuff, right? Okay. So I'm going to start with the prayer that I do in my dragon sessions. Pretty much all of my sessions now. I have a few prayers I do. But this is one I call the cross-quarter prayer. And so we have the quarters, which are north, south, east, and west. 
oftentimes, like what comes into my mind is the um, Cherokee medicine wheel, which is also the different colors of, I believe, red, yellow, blue, and black, something. There's one I'm missing or one I have wrong. <laughs> it might be the blue. It could be green. Which each color then represents a direction. Sometimes you have power animals that represent the direction or archangels, right? And then you have the cross quarter, so the in-between marks. So we have eight points then, southwest, northwest, southeast, that sort of thing. Hi, Amanda. I'm just getting started more or less. Grounding and centering. Let's go. Hmm. Coming into the cross quarter prayer. And we're inviting some dragons and some beings today. All right. We're all in our little cosmic containers. Mine is really floating today. So I'm also going to hold my hematite and keep me grounded. Here we go. And to the north, we call on Isis and the platinum dragons. To the northeast, we call on Hathor, the Hathor Star Nation, and the Golden Stargate Dragons. To the east, we call on Green Tara and the Elemental Dragons. To the southeast, we call on Mother Mary and the Blue Sapphire Dragons. To the south, we call on Mary Magdalene, the Order of the Magdalena and the Magdalena Dragons. To the southwest, we call on Quan Yin and her sacred lotus waters and Quan Yin's pink dragons of compassion. Mm, they feel so good. <laughs> and to the west, we call on White Buffalo Woman, White Buffalo Star Nation, and the Thunder and Lightning Dragons. To the northwest, we call on Sophia God, the pearlescent dragons, the seraphim, all of Sophia's dragons. She's our mother. We're going to visit her today. And we're going to consecrate our sacred space, clearing out what no longer serves us. She's assisting us in removing any parasites or nanotechnology, remote viewers, manipulations, contracts, vows spells, curses, negative entities. Whew, let it go. Move it all back to the divine. Hmm, and we ask for ultimate protection through all space-time continuum and all dimensions and parallel realms, opening our hearts to awareness. Amen. Yay! <laughs> all right. How does that make you feel? I feel like I'm spinning like an eight-pointed star. <laughs> so I wanted to just give you a little bit of the um, the channeled uh, notes that I did a few days ago for today. And that was a reminder to fall in love, not just with your money, but also the manifestation process. So too often we're focused on the end goal too, but... You also just want to enjoy this whole process, okay? So we're enjoying each moment, right? Because you're always going to want more, and that's great. So keep manifesting. Like when you've manifested something, keep it up. Don't give up, right? Maybe you want to focus on one thing at a time specifically, even if it's just I want to feel good. I want life to be easy, <laughs> okay? Maybe that's just what you focus on. I want to feel good and blissful and joyful in my body. And then, ah, just let everything else align, you know? Yeah. So we're always meant to create. So maybe there's something. So maybe you got that as your, you know, blanket creation statement, right? And then when you want to hyper focus on something, try and focus on that thing only for a period of time and see how quickly you manifest it, okay? And the reason we want to create is because it's feminine energy and that's what we're here to do. So it's, you shouldn't feel bad or wrong about, you know, wanting to bring something new in, right? And create it. And it just makes sense that if it is 
um, something that you donate your time to that's somewhere down the road, right? That you also have the money you need to provide for yourself, right? So it's interesting. Um, one of the spiritual gurus that I used to read 20 years ago was um, Mary Summer Rain. And she had a book about her journeys and visions with a blind Native American lady in Colorado who she called No, <clears throat> no Eyes. Maybe she's coming through. <laughs> and <clears throat> she would take her on, on astral journeys, even though she couldn't see in the physical, which was really interesting. But she was against, she was against payment for healing. So you'll hear that in the community. But at the same time, she would get trades. In other words, her community provided for her and they called it giveaways. So they just called it something else, you know, so people would bring food and assist in this and that, you know, so sometimes life will feel like that, that you're just always supported and you're not sure how it's even coming together, but you just feel supported, right? And then when you feel that supported and when you feel aligned, when you're in your creation alignment, you are literally in the vortex. That's what the alignment is. And when you're aligned, literally, you're opening up to the heavens and also down to the earth and bringing up the beautiful richness of Gaia, right? This is how... I see us breathing it up the root chakra, okay? Comes up the legs, you know? <clears throat> so don't feel guilty for your desires, okay? You're meant to. If you desire it, you're meant to create it, all right? It's not always easy to see the hows again, and so that's when you start with the bigger picture and then, you know, maybe some bullet points or outlines and... um you know, spirit will give you direction if you ask. Okay. Don't forget to ask. We have free will here on the planet. So usually our helpers don't interfere unless it's like an emergency. Yeah. Those are those little angels that swoop in or yell in your ears to move. Oh, yeah. I have a very psychic girlfriend I grew up with. She was so psychic that she's closed off to it a bit now. But her experiences were so vivid. And then one instance, they were standing on a corner and something yelled at her to move. And she did. And a car poof, crashed right there. So that's like, that's some real intuition. And that's usually, it'll almost be like a yelling in your ear. <laughs> Seriously. So listen. <laughs> okay, so. I'm so excited. Right. So the things that you have and the things that you do are all meant to enhance your state of being. Okay. So, yeah, we want to be able to eat the foods we can afford and, you know, be in the sunlight or have a plant and, you know, those things, right? They enhance our being. Could even be your crystal, right? <laughs> So you might start off small on your manifestations if you wanted, but I'm hoping like tomorrow we're going to do some bigger tapping around bringing something in immediately. Okay, good. And so it's about how you feel then that brings you into that alignment, right? Um, so first your vibration has to be there. And then you feel good. And when you're in that feel good space, then you can go after those things. All right. Instead of, ooh, I feel bad and I want to go after those things to feel better. Okay. <laughs> so that's where we do the pivot of the thoughts. And yeah, I mean, I've even been pivoting the thoughts. So a lot of my messages come in in songs. And so I'll wake up to songs from spirit. And usually it's my higher self communicating something. And it was a song that was a little negative. And I literally was like, nope, shift that. And I put on like some affirmations, you know, on the YouTube or subliminals. My throat chakra just rolled away. Stop it. <laughs> so when things are part of your physical experience... 
but you're imbalanced, you might feel uncomfortable. All right. So it's interesting how you can eat something and feel guilty about it. Just This is just an example. And you're going to manifest that guilt or negativity around that item. Okay. Or you can love and be grateful for everything you put into your body, regardless of what it is. And bless it, right? With the breath. With your rainbow bubbles, with your Reiki, with your intentions of the heart. Three times. Okay, so that's the difference in that too is eating and doing anything presently. So as you're eating, you're doing it slowly, mindfully, in gratitude. I guarantee you when you give things love, it's going to be way better, right? So even that, even your vitamins, you know, yeah. All the things you put in your body, okay? That just came up, all right? And then um, <clears throat> you don't want to be a place from lack, right? Because that actually defies the law of attraction. So we want to be in a place of, I got this. <laughs> I got this, right? We got this? Heck yeah, all right. <clears throat> I've been, I went up the mountain to Morongo last night and it was very damp air. <clears throat> and it made my lungs a little worse, but it's okay. All right. So, believe you deserve it, and the universe will serve it. All right? Write that down. <laughs> so, we're going to get into chanting. And then from there, we're going to go into our Creatrix Mother Womb Meditation. However, that comes out for us today. Okay? I'm excited. Okay, good. So we know Lakshmi has a chant. Om Shreem. You always end at the lips. You stare at the back of the throat, palate to lips. Is my camera foggy? Om Shreem. <laughs> Get some light codes in here. Lakshami. That's one octave, right? Om Shreem Lakshami. Ooh, feel that. So, un momento. Mm. Gotta have the malas. So malas traditionally are 108 beans, okay? You can chant less, you can chant more, all right? And obviously Lakshmi's coming in with our raise ATM at the moment. Cool. So we can chant to Lakshmi 108 times, okay? And you literally are just taking your hands to each bead like so. All right. I also wear my mala beads to give me protection and clarity and love based on the crystals that are in it. Okay. And it literally only takes like mm, five minutes to do a whole 108 times. All right. And so this is a really great way to bring in Lakshmi's energy. So let's do 10 rounds for Lakshmi because there's another chant I want to teach you today. And if my voice goes froggy, oh well. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. All right. Take a deep inhale. Om Shreem Lakshmi. Om Shreem Lakshmi. Om Shreem Lakshmi. Om 
Shreem Lakshmi. Om Shreem Lakshmi. And you can pick it up. Om Shreem Lakshmi. 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 Feel the vibration. Maybe do your mudras. Good, allowing that beautiful light to come in from the crown, source to crown, down. Fill it up. Mm, let it fill up the heart. Let it overflow here. Let it come out the hands into your cup. Let it go down the body. Fill up the well of the legs, the feet. Let it overflow here. Good. Mm. All right. <clears throat> Woo. Tap how you're feeling. We're going to go deeper. Maybe this lavender will clear up my lungs too. So I often will put oils on the points of the body that are related to the area of need. This is your lung point right below the collarbone. You know how we tap below the collarbone here, and that's a little closer in for our protection. A little bit out, lungs. Mm, yeah, that energy feels so good. Oh, lavender. I've been doing peppermint too, but this is what I have. All right, and then we're going to burn a little more pine. This is how I roll my day, you know. <laughs> I'm in a joyful mood. <laughs> All right, okay. All right, our next chant. Ooh, I'm excited. It comes from the Crystal Codes. Crystal, Crystal Codes. <clears throat> and we teach some of them in the Earthlight Healing Activations, Athena and I. And they're related, I'm just going to let this burn for us. They are related to Lemurians and their inner earth energies. So we are going there today. Yeah. And then in the inner earth, you know, are those fiery ley lines. And watery ley lines. Okay. So we think of earth. It's not just the earth itself. But they're. Whoop. Dang. Flying away from me. We got also water. See. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. So many magical dragons coming through. Air and water. See. We get all these elements combining. Those are the ones that fly away. Right. We're going to get into dragons in the next live in the healer's way a little bit more. Okay. But they're here now, so. And the Lemurians rode dragons. All right. They also knew the ability to shape shift into dragons, which is another thing that I teach and that we do. We do it in the Earthlight Healing class, which we'll probably have late spring. Um, but I also do it in sessions. And you've gotten a little taste of it because we've been grounding our dragon tails. Yeah, our dragon legs, strength, right? Foundation, so good for us. All right. So write this down. The chant is Sigma Sa Junier. All right, this is how we're going to spell it. It's literally just vibrations and sounds, so you can write it anyway so you phonetically understand it, okay? Sig, like S-I-G, like signature. Sig-na. Sigma, Signa. Sa, S-A or S-A-H. I put little hyphens between them. 
ju, j u, ni, like your knee, or n e, long e, signa sa ju ni a, long a. So that could be a y for you. Or you put a little line above it. That's the long a. Yeah. All right. Which literally translates to, I am witness to the Divine Mother. You've become a witness to the Creatrix, and you're going to allow that energy in today, and you're going to claim your own Creatrix energy, okay? And then from there, we'll be doing a chant to manifest it out in an attraction chant. Okay, so I'm going to see who's here so I can say hello. Hi, Robin. I see you just popped on. So uh, we did a little chant to Lakshmi. You can watch the beginning lecture later. <clears throat> <clears throat> so when we chant, we are expressing our creatrix womb or sacral energy, okay? Whether you're feminine or masculine, okay? We have both, right? But literally, it's like the rectum or the yoni. For instance, in labor, you're to, ah, open <laughs> your throat to relax the cervix. This is what I teach. I'm actually a doula. Yeah, it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's more than fun. It's miraculous. Um, but the whole, nah. So when you yell like that, try it. You're going to feel your root chakra drop. Try it right now. <laughs> This is why, you know, maybe we sneeze or laugh, you know, and we might drop our root. Yeah, so if you'll feel that connection, right? So your throat is a lot like the connections down here, okay? And we learn to, ah, like the snake. Oh my gosh, have you ever seen a snake? trying to wrap its jaw around something huge. It's pretty miraculous. I've had an Eastern diamondback rattlesnake in my path when I was leading a group of kids. It was so big that I thought it was an alligator tail, <laughs> which was also around there, right? But it had just eaten something, luckily, because it was slow. But it did turn around to kind of face us once it crossed, you know. But if you, I'm sure you've seen them like go around eggs and how they can just relax their jaw, right? Well, that's sort of also what we're cultivating, that Kundalini energy. So it might be a good visual for you. And so you're going to relax the back of throat when we chant. You're going to let it come from the heart and come from the belly, the sacral. Eventually, just, nah, it comes out like that. Like, when you're clearing and cleansing those deep feminine wounds, and they might not even be yours. They might even be something you carry for the collective. And that's how I felt when we did our ritual in Shasta, Athena and I. Um deeply healing the mother womb and my little Isis Christmas ornament wants to be here and be present. So yeah, she's, she's here to say, mm -hmm. that's right, girl. <laughs> that's how they talk to me. <laughs> All right. So are we ready to chant? <clears throat> Again, I apologize for my stuffy and scratchy voice, but let's try and get through as much as we can, okay? If we get, don't do the whole 108, let's try and at least do like 22 or something, okay? All right, good. Signa sa junie. Join me when you're ready. Signa sa junie. 
Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Signa sa junie. Pause. Feel the vibration. If you had Mala, you'd bring them to third eye, wrapped around the hand. Deep breath. To heart. Mm, breathe it in. Notice how you feel in the body. Allowing that earth energy to rise. Good. Relaxing the hands now. Keeping your eyes closed. Staying in your vibe. Hmm. Good. Creating those grounding cords down to the earth. Let them come out your feet, your sit bones, your tailbone. Creating a big stream of energy. Remember, this is your energy. It does what you tell it to do. Good. And you might decide that your tailbone turns into your dragon's tail. See and perceive it. Notice how it looks. Notice how it curls or if it's straight or barbed or pointy or, you know, feathery. Notice how you perceive it. Now we know it has a lot of strength and power in the astral regardless of if it feels light and feathery in your mind's eye. Good. All right. And now we're going to let our dragon's tail penetrate deep down into the earth. Are you ready? <laughs> Good. On the count of three. One, take a deep breath. Two, allow it to happen. Three, Allowing your dragon's tail to pierce the mantle, the crust. Good. As it does, it's giving you all of this protection around you, around your energy fields. It's clearing those old contracts. Releasing all those vows. All the vows you took on for your whole family. All the karma you took on for your family. Clearing that now. Good. Allow your dragon's tail to merge with your other grounding cords and now go deeper down into the earth, penetrating all the layers of yourself as you do. <clears throat> Clearing your physical being. 
an emotional being going deeper, deeper, your mental being. It's a little bit more yellow and fiery here. Good. Going deeper, deeper until you land into these beautiful spiritual cores. It's like glowing and bright, like the beautiful crystal nature of our being. It's a bit like a clear quartz, but it has all the rainbow hues. Good. Allow your being to merge with that essence. Good. And great mother dragon, Sophia God, we now open our hearts to you and your miraculous ways. And we powerfully ground ourselves to the earth and accept this healing for our highest good. Now calling on the seraphim to perform 222 net releases, clearing out all of our bodies, our energy fields, our spaces in which we exist. Allowing like fishing nets to just come up from the root and up over your body 222 times. Clearing and cleansing your being. Calling on the Benkelistic Dragons to remove and escort all remote viewers again. Any manipulations or negative frequencies. Letting that go so that your vibration is pure. Mm, good, good, good. And now we call on Holy Mother. Good. And we're going to allow her to either appear to us or we're going to feel her energy now as she comes out from this great cave that's in the center of the earth, our creatrix. We call on you, Divine Sophia Dragon, our great mother, to reclaim our divine sovereignty, however you perceive her, okay? Good. We are now in the Divine Trinity the maiden, mother, and crone phases. We are connected now to your creation. We are connected to you, Divine Mother. And we now activate the Holy, Holy Trinity within us. You might see it as a triangle. It could also be the earth symbol for you. Allow it to also have many layers like, um, like Metatron, Star, Star of David. Tetrahedrons, Merkabahs, Merkavahs, like the little star you see in the Superman movie, that's his spaceship, <laughs> okay? As your bodies are lighting up with this creatrix, divine feminine energy, good, the great mother dragon is offering you her blessing. She's penetrating you with her eyes, scanning your aura, your auric field, your chakras, healing you just by looking at you. And she gives you a beautiful crystal. It comes from her heart. And you feel your heart making space. For all the love. And she places this crystal in your heart space to activate you to her. You might feel it down to your toes as your entire being lights up. It's double terminated, so it goes up and down. Beautiful points, terminations. Fill it in your entire being now. It's all this beautiful energy of the Creatrix. Allowing you to manifest anything you desire. Allowing you to align. You are aligning now with the Great Mother. Mm, good. And allowing all the beautiful codes of light to also pour into your crown from Lakshmi. Beautiful. Breathe it in. Mm. Good. And this is a great way to reactivate this meditation is to breathe from heaven and earth into heart. Exhale, ex spread out your heart's energy and let it surround you, right? 
encompass you and bring it back in and really fill your cup. Good. So when you feel even less than worthy or less than light, just pivot your energy to that divine mother energy and allow it to fill you in any way that works for you. Maybe wearing a crystal of your heart's desire that also reminds you of who you are. A divine sovereign being now, no longer attached to uh, different patriarchal ways or the matrix or those beliefs that were limiting your divine potentiality. You are one. Good. All right, bring your hands to your heart. Big breaths, wiggle your toes. Great Mother Dragon allows you to swoosh back up, almost like a little channel or tube that you just go sucked back up into, a little shoot. Right back into your being. All right, good. Whew, I'm going to leave you there. And I want you to do some journaling around what just happened with your energy. Feel free to share. I am feeling super connected. <clears throat> How about y'all? Mm, dragons of the day. Oh, pure white light dragon from Orion. Beautiful cosmic energy is coming in today with this 12-12 portal. So these rays might be in your field. Transforms your ascension knowledge into pure wisdom. Process what you know. Act with truth and honesty. Let your wings of light Grow and expand. Sorry, I'm having a little trouble being in this universe. <laughs> it's a thing. All right. I love you guys. I'm going into Healer's Way at 10. Um, we're going to do something similar, but we're also going to connect to some galactic dragons. I love you. See you soon. Have a beautiful day. Remember, believe you deserve it and the universe will serve it.